Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations with complex numbers. Specifically, we have A plus BI which is the name of this channel to the 11th power equals A minus BI which is the complex conjugate of A plus BI and we're also given that A squared plus B squared is equal to 1 which is nice, right? Now, to be able to solve this problem, uh, we're going to need to know the relationship between a complex number and its complex conjugate. And if you're new to complex numbers or if you need a refresher, go ahead and check out my lecture videos I made a playlist. All right, great. Let's get started. And we could probably approach this problem in at least two different ways. The first method, even though it's going to be very painful, I just want to show you what that looks like. Okay. Now, first of all, just you know, ignore the second equation. What if you, the only thing you had was this, a plus b i to the 11th power equals a minus b i. What would you do, right? You could definitely do something with this, but we'll talk about that a little later. I mean, on the left-hand side, we have something to the 11th power. What, what is that call, calling for? The binomial theorem, right? So you can go ahead and expand it. 11 choose 0, a to the power 11 plus 11 choose 1, a to the power 10 times bi, and then 11 choose 2, those are combinatorial coefficients, a to the 9th bi quantity squared, so on and so forth. There's going to be 12 terms, and then you're going to set it equal to a minus bi. And then the next step would be the following. You're going to go ahead and evaluate powers of i, for example. i squared is going to be negative 1, so you're going to get a real term from there, but this is going to be imaginary, right? And then you're going to separate the real and imaginary parts. And then obviously on the right hand side, the real part is A and the imaginary part is negative B. And you're going to set those equal to each other. Just like when you compare two complex numbers that are equal, that's what you do, right? Again, this is going to be super duper painful. And I'm not even sure if this is going to result with something, okay? It might. I haven't tried it because it's super long, super boring, cumbersome, whatever you want to call it. It's bad. Okay. But I just still wanted to show you that's an approach, something that we're not going to do. Okay? Cool, cool. What are we going to do then? So we're going to go ahead and look at it alternatively. First of all, notice that we have the uh, Z or A plus BI along with its conjugate. So think about it. If I multiply both sides by something, then I can make one of these sides real. Guess what? If you multiply both sides by a plus bi, because if you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, so let's make some room for the product. Let's go ahead and maybe put this over here. Uh, let's see, I'm probably going to need a room like this much maybe. Okay, here we go. This is good. Now, if you multiply a, a minus bi by a plus bi, their product is going to be real. Isn't that cool? That's going to be nice. Because how do you define the complex conjugate? When you multiply or add to the number, then you get a real number. And that's unique. And of course, we have to multiply both sides by the same thing. And the reason we picked A plus BI because we wanted to get a real number here. It's good to have a real number. You'll see in a little bit why this is super helpful. But on the left-hand side, something good happens too. Look at that. We have the same base, and this is considered first power, even though it doesn't matter on the right-hand side. And this becomes now a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, right? I keep emphasizing that, to the 12th power equals, and what does that become? Remember, if you multiply a complex number and its conjugate, you get sum of two squares, right? And that's a real number. So in other words, sum of two squares cannot be factored in the real world most of the time, unless it's like fourth powers. There's a special case. And in the re complex world, it can be factored into a plus bi and a minus bi. And sometimes this method is actually used to solve some diophantin equations, which is a pretty interesting topic, I think. So what am I getting? Well, you're not getting much except for the fact that the right-hand side is real. But now, if you go ahead and look at the second equation, aha, uh -huh. Obviously, we ignored it for a while, but now is the time to bring it in. A squared plus B squared is equal to 1, a giant 1, right? So we're going to set this equal to 1. And that's just beautiful because if you just forget about it, we don't need you anymore, go away. A plus B i to the 
12 power equals 1. Now, if you don't know what this means, that's perfectly fine. In the lecture notes, I went over the powers of complex numbers and the roots of complex numbers. So when I say powers, obviously, I'm talking about different powers because if you raise a complex number to the 12th power, you get a single answer. In this case, we're getting one. But if you try to reverse the process, then you get multiple answers. For example, a complex number only has one 12th power, but it has 12 12th roots. Make sense? Okay. And they're all separated by 30 degrees because you, they, they got to share 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Make sense? Okay. So what is that supposed to mean then? I have a complex number. By the way, what are we solving for? I guess A and B, right? I have a complex number whose 12th power is 1. That means my complex number, the number that I'm looking for, A plus BI, is the 12th roots of 1, or we could call this roots of unity, because 1 is considered unity in the complex world, and there are 12 of them. To be able to find it, though, what am I supposed to do? Write this in polar form. In the complex world, 1 can be written as e to the power 2 pi n i. If you think about it, this is the argon plane. 1 is right here, 1 unit away from 0. This is real, this is imaginary, so on and so forth. And the angle that this thing, vector, whatever, makes with the real axis is zero radians or two pi radians or four pi radians. You get the idea. You keep adding multiples of two pi to get multiple values. Make sense? So in this case, two pi n, n is an integer, represents all multiples of two pi and can be positive or negative. So we are going to find the 12th roots of this number, and that'll give us a plus bi. Beautiful. How do you do that? You just, you, properties of exponents is going to give you pi n i divided by 6. That's going to be my number, a plus bi. And this means that n starts with 0, or you can start with 1 and end with 12. That's fine too, as long as you use 12 different values. If I start with 0, I have to stop at 11, because when I get to 12, I'm getting 2 pi n, which is the same thing, repeats over and over. But these are going to be unique roots. They're all different. If n is 0, for example, I'm going to be getting a plus b i equals e to the power 0, which is 1. So 1 is a solution, right? <laughs> what does that mean? It means a is 1, b is 0. Easy, right? Great. What about something else like n equals 5? Let's just pick a random one. And then you're going to be getting a plus b i equals e to the power 5 pi n i over 6. So you kind of have to consider 5 pi over 6, which is actually 150 degrees. And if you just think about it, 150 degrees is something like this. And its cosine and sine value is actually going to be uh, reflections of the 30 degrees. If you think about the unit circle, because the modulus is 1 here. And you're going to be noticing that the sine value is the same. So this is going to be cosine 5 pi over 6. I don't need parentheses, do I? Come on, please. So you can write parentheses if you want. But cosine of uh, 150 degrees is the same as cosine of 30 with a negative sign. That is going to be negative. What is cosine 30? Root 3 over 2. And this is going to be 1 half. So in other words, one of the roots is going to be this one. In other words, if you take this number and raise to the 12th power, you're going to get 1. You want to try it? You can. But calculators would be easier in this case, using a calculator. Make sense? We could also do this. I don't know. You can call this 2a or 2b or not 2b. Okay. You can also do this. Call this z. Then this becomes z bar. So now you have z to the 11th equals z bar. Now, even if they didn't tell us a squared plus b squared equals 1, would it follow from here? Probably. By the way, this just includes 0. Z can't be 0 because we said the modulus is 1. And the modulus for 0 is 0. So from here, again, multiplying both sides by Z is going to give us the exact same thing. This is going to be uh, the absolute value of Z squared. This is going to be Z to the 12, and so on and so forth. Get the idea? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.